in September 2020, we sold our house in the UK, then moved to Normandy in France, where we bought an ancient French farmhouse with various outbuildings, including an old barn, a small cottage with two woodlands, and three and a half acres of pastured land in a beautiful national park area. Follow us on our journey as Budo and I renovate the farmhouse, manage our land and take on many projects for you to enjoy. Let the fun begin. Bonjour everyone, hope you're all well. Hi, welcome to Caravan Corner again. Um, in tonight's video, um, we've got lots going on, haven't we? Yeah, busy, busy. Um, we got You saw the porch on Friday. Uh, up to dry fitted uh, and by the end of this video you see it all the draw pegs done all jointed and finished it's up it's erected that part of it uh, and the finish and it looks absolutely beautiful yeah it looks beautiful looks lovely it's coming on I start um, doing the oiling of the components of the porch. I've done a first coat. I've still got to do two more coats, which you'll see in up and coming videos. Yep. Um, I also treated um, the, where it needed for the worm. So that's been treated as well. Woodworm. And, yeah, woodworm. I always say worm, don't we, for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, also in tonight's video, um, I'm cooking with the oyster mushrooms Lovely. that were given as a gift from our patrons Alberta and Jup and it's actually inspired me to cook different varieties well, of mushrooms she gave you a kit yeah she got what she to gave grow me mushrooms. For, uh, to grow them in coffee grounds in a little black tub you've got holes at the side and holes on the top so I've got the mushrooms spores as well and all Alberta did was start um, the process off and then I've had to keep layering it till the actual oyster mushrooms come out the side and I do a special recipe um, and they were absolutely yummy so I'm going to be trying different ways in the future on how to grow different mushrooms as well so yeah. thank you you've inspired me for that and the recipe was very simple I know um, the recipe was very simple but lovely but it was really delicious um and we've, had, sure we've had this recipe it. before mm -hmm. but with different mushrooms i mean mainly yeah. um and it, it was really very really nice um and i'm sure that you will try that i would think, yeah i would try definitely. it because it's very simple it's a quick uh uh, thing and it makes like a nice aperitif or something small you know you can breakfast you don't have to have or like lunch a, yeah we like it for breakfast that's the main thing um but that's mm, pretty much it for this month isn't it because a it's a short one this week because uh the video's going to be quite longer no well not long long not as long as the last one but um it, it, it goes into a lot of detail for you it shows you little quirky things that i do as a carpenter to get the finish of this and make mm -hmm. it uh, for a longevity to last a long time uh, so watch it till the end and uh i'm sure you'll enjoy it and uh next friday come in hopefully we should uh, or well, i should be onto the roof and start building all the roof structure and um hopefully then moving on to the tiling felt and batten uh felt and batten means yeah. it's a cover that goes on over the um bastions or the uh, uh rafters uh, i think they call them chevrons here but we call them rafters uh felt goes over and then you have your your battens on top and then your your uh, tiles go on top of that and hopefully I should have all the oily done, I would think, definitely, two yep. coats of everything. So that will be the actual components of the porch itself, nice and sealed. Yep. And I've also, which you'll probably see maybe in next week's video, I've started um, preparation on... Um, to start pointing behind the farmhouse which we were talking about in previous videos so i'm just raking out now getting the old ivy off haven't i just prepping yourself ready for yeah. so we can put the tower up for it yeah um I pretty much i it, think really. that's it it's a short one so High enjoy five. the videos enjoy that's the video um send your comments again we loved all, all the comments yeah. it was fantastic and um don't forget to like share and subscribe yeah. and put your notification bell on so you'll get notified we want to try and get to ten thousand in within six months if we can or three months and i don't see that don't sound a lot really i don't think so let's go for it yeah. anyway guys 
thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the, see next, you on one. the next one so we've got tracy on the belt sander if you can hear me she's actually sanding them up now um ready for oiling I've just kind of made her a mix, complete mix for the uh, sealer. You have like two different mixes of the oil coats for this, uh, which are mixes I've used for many years. Uh, the first one is more of a penetrating mix, and then the other one is more of a surface mix. So you can see it's coming up lovely. Just watch Tracy for a minute. She'll get her arms strong using that tool. Two or three hours of that and then she'll know. <laughs> She's quite strong anyway. <coughs> How are you finding it, Trey? How are you finding that? It's good. A lot heavier than the normal sanders yeah, that yeah. I've used. Because the first time I'm using this, I use all the other sanders. Well, that's, uh, that's a bit more of an industrial uh, yeah. belt sander. And you can see as well, because look, yeah, it you... doesn't take a lot of work, does it? To no, get it's, it comes up lovely, up. smooth. Once you brush that down, and then you get the oil on. And uh, this is one of the top components with the uh, the mould on there that I made. My favourite mould. And you can see the two mortises there that join in the centre of that one. And the moulding, uh, mortise is there. But, uh, so I'll leave you crack on with that, Trace. Yeah. That's going to turn out really mighty fine. So, just check the recording, yep. So now Trace is putting on the first coat I made up of the uh, sealer. Okay, this is the one that's going to penetrate in. It feeds the wood, doesn't it? It feeds the wood, that's it. But obviously colours it at the same time. But uh, you can get now the colour we're going to get. Let me just try and get us close up on there without your shadow on, Trey. Uh, hopefully you can see that, guys. Good. Okay, so that's the colour. Let's uh, just a little tad there, Trey. We really want to get it soaked in. Okay, so Trey's going to carry on doing it. Each one, one individual one at a time, is going to be sanded, brushed, cleaned wiped and then uh we'll be oh bit of an hour. i just had a big hornet hit me in the neck um yeah. like it didn't sting me uh yeah so what trace is going to do is, is we're going to get each one finished like that to let it dry in the sun and then we'll put them on the uh scaffold so they can dry out one part one component at a time rather than doing all of them sanding them and then doing it that way which is a conventional way of doing yeah. it but I'm we're Applying the oil and I'm probably leaving it for about five minutes because it's so hot out here yeah. normally you'd leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes and I'm just using the cloth and literally wiping off the excess I've done this side already you can actually see yeah, so, that, so yeah you can see the color which is a beautiful warm sort of honey oak color Lovely. Um, and all the uh, mulberry rays mulberry I could never say that um, Rays are showing, so you can see all these little flecks are there. Okay, that's, the, that's one of the beautiful things about oak. It just stands out like and a treat. Just... And the smell is divine, isn't it? Yeah. There's a certain ingredient in there. Well, there's three lovely. ingredients in that. Okay. Um, so you can see the finishing here. So it's nice and tacky and wet. And that's soaking in. That, we'll leave that for a little while and that just, that wood will pull that. Um, sealer in yep, and pulls out the grain as well That's pulls the grain and also it will uh it'll, it'll protect that wood and then what we do is once it's all built and put up uh tracy will do another at least three coats of another mix that i'll make up for her yep. and uh that will get that finished fantastic I'm all right really, really happy now that i'm getting the oil on as well because you know it's going to start yep. bringing all their moldings and everything all out. the details out it's going to be yeah. lovely right so I'm going to let you crack on. Thank you. I'll dismantle a couple of other bits and then when you finish that, I'll help you lift it on the scaffold, all right? Okay. I know your face so well 
but I can tell that it's changing. I know when you lie there still that you've just been resting. We get along so well, but I see that we're changing. We've got a long way down. Till we're sixty years old We've got a long way down Till we can stand it all I know your body so well but I can tell that it's changing You bring me heaven where there used to be hell I know you do Hi there everyone, uh, welcome back to Caravan Kitchen and today I've got a really nice treat for you I'm going to be making um, oyster mushrooms with a spicy breadcrumb and also a garlic lemon spring onion mayonnaise and creme fraiche dip that is what we're actually going to do straight away so that i can get it prepared and get it in the, the refrigerator so what you need i'll show you here i've got half a teaspoon of lemon juice and just over a half a teaspoon of lemon zest okay here i've got two garlics finely chopped um, some, hang on, some um, spring onions, that's sort of a medium sized spring onion and I've also used the green bits. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to transfer all of this to the bowl. Smells nice. Mm, it does, I smell the garlic. I smell all the spices from the bread crumbs. Mm. Okay, we'll put this down here. Okay, and then I'm going to put four tablespoons of full fat or I would say heaped tablespoons of full fat creme fraiche. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we're going to have two. Let me just knock that off. Two heaped tablespoons as well, or dessert spoons, these are more like. Oh, let me try and squeeze that. Of mayonnaise. Okay. One way of doing it. <laughs> and then all we're going to do, have a look, Budo, is just combine all the ingredients together so they're all mixed thoroughly. Okay. And then that will go in the refrigerator and cool down while we're making the breadcrumbs. Yep. Right, so these, let me just put these away. These were given to us as a gift from our birth friend Jup, our patient, our, pa our patient. Our patients. <laughs> <laughs> so like We've got patients now, what are we doctors? <laughs> Psychiatrist <laughs> clinic. Um, uh they gave it to us as a gift and if you go back on our past videos on the porch build and how to um, grow mushrooms you'll see Alberta showing me how she does it yeah so we've grown them you mean yeah, yeah. so what's actually happened is um, Alberta started me off she um, broke up all the mushroom spores you um, soak some ground coffee grounds in water can you see them? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, carry on. Then you squeeze in your hand till they're quite moist. You don't want any water. You lay them, then put your mushroom spores, then the coffee, and then when all the white, the spores start coming through, you cover it again. Um, you build it up, don't you? You build yeah. it up, you just <laughs> keep building it. So, dun da da da. Now, we haven't had any come out the top yet. I think they're about to burst through. And as far as I know, you should get two good lots of um, mushrooms. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just 
just going to gently oops let's put the lid back on because I want some more from there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and clean these it's only a, a small little handful I'm going to go and clean these and then join me back okay welcome back everyone I've now thoroughly washed the mushrooms hang on it's just a yeah, they look nice today. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just gently break them off. I'm going to cut off the end bit because that's the tough bit. We don't want that bit. You can feel that when you cut it. Okay, put that in there. Lovely mushrooms, aren't they? Really pretty. Yeah. Okay, do the same on here. When you cut it, you can feel it's quite tough. Oyster mushrooms are quite nice anyway. Yeah, so. we've had them with Chinese, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, mainly eat with Chinese food. Like. Yeah, so put them aside. <coughs> I've got my um, ground nut oil I'm using, because obviously I want yeah. that nutty taste. That's actually boiling, so you want it quite hot because you're going to deep fry the mushrooms. Yep. And all I'm going to do is cut them in half. Because you want them sort of a nice size. This one probably even freeze. A mouthful, as they a say. A mouthful, yes. Yeah. And then here, in my flour, just normal plain flour, I have um, half a teaspoon of ginger, one teaspoon of paprika, normal yeah. paprika. Normal, yeah. Just under half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. One teaspoon of ground coriander gives it that nice taste. And then here, this is a Fritz paprika mix. It has like a hot um, paprika, garlic, and it's absolutely yummy yeah. with um, French fries or potato wedges. So we've got one teaspoon of this in the flour. I've got two eggs here. Oh, what yeah, and salt. Sorry, one teaspoon of salt. Yep. Yeah. And then in here, in my egg mix. Because this is my dry mix, this is my wet mix. I have a good sprinkle of the Fritz paprika. Again, yeah. Gives it that little hit kick. And then here, I've just got my normal white bed crumbs. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to do? Just going to cover the mushrooms in um, the bread crumbs. Make sure they're covered with the egg mixture. And then let it drain and then just going to cover them in the breadcrumbs this is actually similar to how i make schnitzel 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 that's it yeah let me just see <coughs> a little bit longer with that one okay so you just repeat the process Put the mushrooms in make sure it gets really coated with all the spices and i've used dry spices because obviously i want them to be absorbed into the flour because if you use fresh they're not going to stick to anything are they okay. it's just such a simple dish but tastes, simple but tasty yeah tastes absolutely yummy again just make sure Alberta, if you're watching this, try this recipe. Yep, if she hasn't tried it already. <laughs> she likes, I, don't, I think she likes cooking, don't she, Alberta? Yeah. They love the birani, didn't they? Yeah. And Alberta actually helped me prepare all the yeah. vegetables. It was like having my mum here. <laughs> it's lovely. Right, let's do it. So I'm just going to carry on coating these. And then if you want to join me back, and then we'll get them in the fryer. Fryer, lovely. Welcome everybody back to the uh, kitchen again. To caravan. It smells kitchen. delicious in here. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly say I used roughly about two cupfuls of flour, but I would say generally for this amount of mushrooms, I would probably use maybe just one cup. It's only because I'm going to be cooking with this as well. I'm cooking well, extra for us. Well, we've got Shirelles as well. Yeah, so I'm so, going to be um, trying different tomorrow. Mushrooms. So you want to keep that for tomorrow. And the egg, keep the egg mixture the same. If you find you run out, just top your egg up. Yep. And the breadcrumbs is one to two cupfuls. 
But right. again, if you're doing a batch like this, I would go with one. Let's okay, so, so we've just done two already, so. That's how they come out. Drop them in. Two. Don't take long either. No. A few minutes in there, that's it. And I would just keep um, turning them so they don't brown, because obviously breadcrumbs do cook very quick. But the dip is mm, looks lovely. I Are did, you going to chop one of them in half, Trace? So we can. Uh, yeah, I've I got did, a knife here. But. I did have a little um, taste up. I'll have a bit. And that's what it looks like. Come out lovely, isn't it? I'm going to have a little bit. Excuse us, everyone. Oh. We we like to test as we're going. Oh. Mm. Oh. Delicious. Mm. Mm. I can taste all the spices as well. Spices. Mm. Oh. As they say in Francais, c'est magnifique or delicious. Mm. Mm. Oh, they're lovely. Champions. But you can just have them for breakfast, have them for lunch. Yep. Or even if you're daring, you can put them, with, like I probably would, in a lovely um, French stick with some salad. And yeah. sort of, because they look a bit like. <coughs> I like them, them in the morning like this with uh, yeah. asparagus. Yeah, asparagus and lemon. Right, let's just come over here, Bodo. Yep, so they're done now, already, aren't they? Yep, just about another minute. There we go, look. And That's how long. And you'll taste um, all the spices as well. And next week, in next week's cook video, I'm going to be doing a lovely chicken dish, creamy chicken dish with. Um, our broad beans. Which oh I'm yeah, that's, that'd be nice as well. Yeah. They're growing absolutely beautiful. Right, I'll just get these last two in, or three, and they shouldn't take too long now. I bet you wish you had smell of vision. <laughs> they look lovely. They just like chicken pieces, don't yeah, they? Yeah, but they're lovely though. They they taste lovely as well. But I think what and what I like about these mushrooms is they keep their shape, don't they? You, yeah. you actually look like an oyster when you look yeah. at them like. But what I'm going to do is when I do my, because Alberta has inspired me now to grow more mushrooms, but I'm going yeah. to be... Um, we were hoping our neighbour up the road would give us a big basket of his mushrooms. It's but, all, uh, he gave some to Adam, but he didn't give us none yet. So it's we, all incognito. It's all, yeah, they, all, they, they keep it very secret in here, the French. They don't tell you where they get their mushrooms yeah. and what forests. And <laughs> Even Adam doesn't yeah. know, and Adam gets on. But no, I'm so what, hang on, hang on, I was going to say something. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I want to train Chessy now. You've got to say me. <laughs> right, no, I want to train Chessy, right? Okay. If I can get a nice truffle, mm -hmm. a nice smelling truffle, and then start hiding it and letting her find it, I get her trained up because there's uh, loads of oak and beach I was over there. Say that. And where, that, where beach and oak grow, there's normally truffles. Yeah. So. But what I want to do is I want to try and grow them a different way with five gallon buckets. You just fill how many buckets up you want, one whole bucket with sawdust. Yep. But the sawdust that needs to be soaked in pre-boiled water overnight then you just wring the sawdust out you get another five gallon bucket drill loads of holes in and do the same you lay your mushroom spores sawdust mushroom stores Fantastic. Spores. so you can have lots of so, mushrooms so are we going to sit and eat these now yeah let me just okay folks well i hope you enjoyed that uh little cook with trace yep. um and uh she was cooking oyster mushrooms there in the, in the mix she showed you Give it a go because you will absolutely love it. It's delicious. And the dip as well is just yeah. perfect, isn't it? You get the spices from the breadcrumb and you can get the garlic and the lemon yeah, from it's, the... It's a lovely, it's a lovely little um, sort of... It's more like an aperitif, I suppose, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, guys. Au revoir. Good morning, all, and welcome. Um, just going to give you a little bit of an update of where I am on the porch. So, we assembled the porch, uh, or the structural part of it, um, and now I've dismantled it down. Tracy's been sanding and then she's been doing the uh, sealer coat with a special mix I use. Uh, that, well, it's just not special mix, it's just a mix I've used for many years. Um, but I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, little details now just to give you a bit more insight into uh, the dowels. Okay, so let me uh, spin you around. <coughs> okay, so what I've done now is I've set up my drill um as you can see here okay and i set a depth stop with a marker on the drill I, I, it's very critical i don't want this to go any deep and that's allowing for the point as well because on this type of construction i want the the dowels to go in go past the tenon and go in halfway into this timber here from there to there 
okay to get the grip and to pull the uh, tenons into this mortise all right um, so I've done the marking out I put a little mark here I've done them on all of it and so I'm going to get ready to start drilling uh, I don't use a fast uh, uh, what do you call it a bit a twist bit because it pulls in too quick and it'll, it'll run away with you so use a you always use a uh, spade bit to do this type of work it's uh it's more controlled and um you get a better finish in it as well all right all i got to do all i must make sure though is this this is nice and sharp which it is okay i know that's sharp uh the other thing is is i've done a test pilot hole so these are the dowels if you remember i made up okay and i've drilled one and put the dowel in there that's locked in there i couldn't pull that out if i tried okay i'd have to drill that out so that's the sort of what the, the what it looks like when it's in and then it gets cut off just above surface on the um <coughs> on the inside of the porch the dowels will be at uh, the no sorry the dowels are in, on the outside of the porch will be from the top will be from the outside so you'll see the dowels here because we've got the seal configuration there and the, and the rebate that i've put in let me show you that so now i've cut this rebate here okay to accept the new seal the full seal to go in here okay and this gets in set um we can't put a dowel in there because we've got no space so the dowels are going to come from the back side this way okay and then this one because i've changed it a little bit because i was going to take this up higher but i wanted to get i want to keep the water away i don't want it splashing back so i'm going to change this one this is the only joint that now has changed see this is this is thing about carpentry it's fluid you know you change as you go but this is going to have a mechanical fixing okay so what i'm going to be doing is just boring up two holes here two holes here up that way and there'll be four inch uh stainless steel and it's very important you use stainless steel screws pushed up through there to pull this down okay and then what i'm going to do is is i'm going to set this in putty and i'll show you that actually because i've just mixed that up so i've got some uh light colored putty and uh let me show you here so this is it's all right it's not creme brulee don't worry so this is the putty mix that i made up okay um it smells a bit of a uh, burnt tar at the moment it's got a linseed oil but a burnt tar smell because one of the ingredients i put into it is a uh, stockholm tar uh, to get the colour off of, of the light party and uh, so there's another ingredient I put in there I'd like to keep that secret as well actually uh, but there's another ingredient that goes in that as well to make that because we want this putty to stay flexible it's very important that it stays flexible in the joint because the wood's going to move and shrink and swell because this wood at the moment is between 18 and 22 percent moisture content which is normal so don't don't think around in your head oh you know it's uh oh it's too wet that's how that would be too wet for users furniture in the house but outside you want the wood to be the ambient temperatures yeah it wants to be like the dampness the moisture of the outside so it's not far off it it will come down a little bit more once that glass goes in and it starts to dry out it will come down more but it will always stay there with it um and also the ceiling mix and the uh the finishing coats are fully um, microporous or breathable. They will let the moisture in and out slowly, uh, but without compromising the um, the wood, if you like, you know, to make it rot and that. So it seals it, but it still uh, lets it lets the moisture in and out. And uh, there was another point I was going to say about that. Um, ah, the oil. Right. I want to make it clear to everyone when you put the finish on you're gonna have to do some investigations on your own but never ever just put linseed boiled linseed oil on its own okay you need to put a couple of agents in there to make it dry properly because boiled linseed oil does dry more quicker than raw on certain situations but because this oak is very porous okay and oak is generally known for being very porous it sucks in the oil and if it pulls it in if it's just raw uh, sorry boiled linseed oil or raw it'll pull in the oil but it won't let it dry because it's pulled it in too deep 
so you need them agents them other agents that i put into it to make it dry and that is bone dry now okay that was only put on yesterday okay so it's, it's bone dry but it'll probably be a little bit damp in the surface but it'll be dry in the next day or two but there's um there's a point you have to think about don't go rushing just putting boiled linseed oil on a external uh a wet oak okay or green oak but anyway that's where we are at the moment so i've got the color right i think on the putty now what's the putty's going to do basically let me show you actually i'm going to put some on here all right so imagine that's the joint all right and then the bit of wood that's going to go on the joint would come down here right and as i pull it down and, and um, fix it or secure it you'll see it start to squeeze out and it locks it in okay and then when i'm finished uh i'll just do this briefly quickly show you but what i'll do is is i'll let that go off for a little while and then i'll just clean that putty off okay i know it's moved but you know you, you know what i'm trying to say and when it's there and done it's a bit more to come off there yet but you can get the idea it's not an intrusive joint it's it, it's, it shows the putty a little bit but it's similar to the this color here look, which is the the finished color well it's close to the finished color so and what that does is that water seals it and it's flexible because i've made this flexible because i've put another agent in this that will keep this a little bit flexible and soft okay so it's normal like your white putty then i put some coloring in it uh so coloring i got from my stockholm tar and then i put some other agent in there to make it keep it flexible and that will set lovely and that's a uh, slightly stickier and it'll pull in the uh the, the wood to the wood when the wood's got the dowel in there if you understand anyway sorry if i'm just going over the top with this but <laughs> i just wanted to uh give you a little bit of an update of where we are now bonjour budo um you just want to show us some detail of yes. the next stage of the porch build well i want to show you how i mark out for the dowels okay so if you come in a little bit closer come closer so i've drilled out all the uh peg holes right on the main timbers and then you've got these sitting on top which have got the tenons going down to about here okay and there's no hole in the tenon yet because what you do is you put them in place then you get your little drill bit which has got a little spike on the end of it okay and that lines up in the drill bit nicely and all i do is i put it in there give it a couple of taps and that'll put a little mark on the tenon for me right so when i draw the tent pull this off what i'll do is then wherever that mark is on the tenon and in the on the tenon itself i'll move it up towards the shoulder by about two or three mil right so what that means is is the hole that's on the tenon will be slightly higher up here it'll be more up to sort of here okay so when i put this draw dowel in this point will find its way over the top of it and as it starts to drive in it'll pull this down and basically that's it but that's how i mark them out that's how i'm going to find out where my marks for my marks with this tool in. and that'll okay? obviously secure them all together won't it lock oh, yeah. it once, all in lock once it all that's in, in because I've got a bed of in putty, right? But once that's in, that's in. There's yeah. no there's no taking this down anymore now. No. That'll be it then. And then the next phase will be next week. Or early, ne well, yeah, next week, putting the uh, roof, or cutting the roof in and making all the roof structure. Because there's just nearly as much work as there is here. Mm -hmm. Well, not quite, but nearly, you know. Excuse me. But anyway, and then once we get the roof on. Yeah. And I've done the roof and I've done all the tiling, everything's finished up there. Then I'll start the joinery yeah. to make all the sashes and the, the doors. doors and then maybe think about making this frame and door at the same sort of time, all right? Yeah, but we'll see let me that. just have a look here. Yeah, but just have a look now because it's coming down again, the whole lot. So I can do the uh, tenons. It's looking lovely now and it's made a difference, hasn't it? It's made sort of everything come through we just well I, i've treated where there was worm yep. um and come then all i've done is one coat of oil so once it's all properly in situ and yep. you don't have to take it apart then i'll probably maybe two well, more coats yeah oh definitely two more coats come in here trace i'll just show you some detail um and more detail <laughs> so if you spin back around 
I showed them earlier about the uh, rebate for the seals, but I've also now cut the rebate in the jams, the door jams, okay? And that, that's to take a door, right? This door will be uh, approximately 46 millimeters wide. This is uh, 50 millimeters wide. And then on here, actually, I've got a bit. It's the wrong color. Let me get it out of my pocket. One sec, I know I had a bit earlier. It's like to test it. Bear with me. Right, here we go. So, basically, the other one we've got is, is brown, right, to match this. Um, but it's stacked away in one of my storage boxes when we brought from England. Um, but this is a white one I've got. What that does is that goes in that groove and it locks into that groove, okay? All the way down, so it's solid in there. I have to get a pair of pliers to pull it out now. Um, and what happens is when the door shuts on it, it pushes against it. If you'll see what I mean, hang on. It pushes, uh, well, anyway, it just pushes against it and it creates a seal. A waterproof tight waterproof seal there as well as a draft proof seal okay and that will go all the way up and all the way across the top as well so if you just pan up there look I'll try and get this out mm, hang on probably gonna rip it yep, no, so it's out. All along here I've got it out so it comes up here as well so that'll all be up there as well okay I won't push it all in that'll be up there the same but this is gonna be brown okay instead of this instead of this white color uh, to match the oak all right um, and that reminds me on um if you pad up onto the windows tray that went over there right hang on so i'm going to show you how not now but in a later video i use you know i made these windows and i put them i, I fit them in but i'm going to show you the whole draft exclude system that goes into these and uh, how they finish and how they become really efficient windows once they've got a nice uh, draft excluder system in them. But anyway. And also they make them open, when you open and close them. They, they switch act, better. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's like swishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Swishing. Um, we also but, uh, have that's these all in another one, another one. But I just I said that because I'm doing this here as well. Uh, so we're trying to make it look old and rustic and, and match the building. But we're also trying to use uh, some modern uh, techniques mm. within the system to keep it draft proof which is the we want this to be draft proof yeah very more so than anything because this is where we come in the house we stop here in the winter we shut the door then open this door and the heat comes into this and fills this little space up we probably could be complaining that it's too hot because we don't we we like well, to be warm, warm. In the winter anyway. yeah but we d we like to be warm but we like we like to sleep in a cool room we're funny like that yeah. we don't like it too hot but, but um, it'd be beautiful though I'm it will be so beautiful pleased. and also i've got uh we're not going to put french hinges on um i'm going to talk to you about something else in a minute as well quickly but the French hinge, hinge system is, they have a rebated door that sits into a rebate, so mm. the doors are a lot thinner. Um, and they have a, a lift on, a lift off hinge system, right? Now in the UK, we use what we call a butt system. It's a butt, butt hinge. And they're a lot, lot stronger, and they're a lot bigger, and these ones have got very expensive brass butts that will be going in there. Are they like the ones that I used to call the butterfly hinges? No, 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 no different ones. Else. Yeah. Um, they're just a butt hinge. But they're they're uh, they're a well-made constructed butt hinge, and I'll show you them later on when we get to that stage. Um, and they are very heavy duty, very strong, and they were designed for stopping breakings, basically, and breaking that. So, uh, so B, sorry, go on, B, go away. Um, nothing wrong with the French system. It's just that I, I'm used to the English system, so I'm trying to incorporate a bit of French and a bit of English with everything. But let me cut, come out here. I want to just show you something else. So if you go out first, Trey. Um, Where are we going to? Just turn around a minute. Right, so what I've done, I'm pulling these seals down, right? Instead of putting a bolt through, which I was thinking about, a coach bolt, I've now put brackets all the way around and they're around the other side, and these will be fixed to the seals when the seals are bedded down, okay? And they'll pull them down. That's a strong bracket, same with the other ones. When you get them all working together, plus the seal's going to overlap that, so you won't see this, and then this is going to be plaster. Now, the plastering. Me and Tracy had a talk about this earlier, didn't we? Mm -hmm. What's your head there behind you? Um, so we're going to be putting lime plaster on here, all right? And uh, what I was thinking, it might not happen yet, but we were thinking of doing this, is I was going to parge it, pargeting, P-A-R, how's it spelled? 
If you know the word, you need P to know how to spell it. G E double T I N G, I think. Right, so I've got a Parget, a fleur de lis on here, which will come out, it'll, it'll protrude out, it'll stick out on in plaster, and then I'm going to bead this off as well. So, but that's something that might change, but that's what we're aiming at at the moment. Yeah. And that'll be on both sides. So that brings in the French feel with the fleur de lis and, and the theme throughout the house, yeah? Okie dokie. So, do you think that'd be a good idea? Would you like that? Yeah, we're in thoughts about it, isn't we? Yeah. I want to see some pictures and that first. I think we'll keep talking first. about it for a little bit and we'll yeah. see how we feel about that. Mm. Because it's, we're going to be putting on some sort of, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, lime wash to finish it anyway because it's lime because it's going to be it's going to be a, uh, a a live lime or a fatty lime what we call a fatty lime mix to make it um, and then you're going to have it above as well aren't you Trace yes so we've got to tie that colour in nicely with yeah. the oak that blends in with the the yeah. pointing as well the lime mortar as well on yeah. the stone well it will be a different colour obviously because we're no but we want it all to tie in don't tie we in, yeah and I think that'll be a bit too bland if it's just plain plaster yeah. where if we put up if i design a fleur-de-lis in there yeah uh, say this sort of size within that and then frame it in some yeah. way we'll, we'll look at that we'll we look at them that, when yeah. we come to it but anyway so we're ready now so i'm going to be uh taking it all apart drilling all the things and then we're going to put it together and that's it when i whack it all together that's it stay in there then and then i can get up the ladder and carry on oiling yeah Okay folks, so I just want to show you what I mean about the putty. So this is the putty on the edges here, okay. That gets put on all around the edges, okay. So I'll show you how I apply it. Nice and simple, like you're, like you're putting, you know, for glazing. Sticky stuff, this one. Anyway, that goes all the way around. It goes around, it's on the other end as well. Okay, and then I push this, stand this up bed it down in which I've already done over here so you can see I'll get you a close-up okay and then when I put this down draw down in here that's going to all squeeze out and it creates a nice watertight joint um, it's something I must admit you don't see carpenters do much nowadays they don't do these little uh, finishing details to finish things off as they used to because they rely on the uh, modern products uh, that they finish with to seal up them um, Sorry, I'm just titivating here <laughs> um, Yeah, they don't they, they rely on modern products where they can paint around and it sinks in and it, it, it I suppose it's maybe works. I don't know. I never use it, but um, This is a very old way of doing things and you would have seen this a lot more on when they were jointing and pegging on um, say boats or ships old ships and that you know that's what they would have used because putty was used extensively in the uh, boat building world and you know where boats go on the sea so there's a reason for it to keep the water out anyway that's the reason i just wanted to show you that you probably won't find that anywhere on youtube because there's not a lot of guys doing it now nowadays anyway so i'm going to carry on uh, i've done all the uh, draw uh, the drilling the holes out so I'm now sort of just bedding them in and then I'm getting ready for doing the uh, peg joining. You hold this map, I'll hold your hand Take this love around the world Don't mind those crows buzzing around your head Nothing's gonna hurt your girl I believe you're here for a while Die, but I believe this love is stronger than you and I. Let's take the Jeep along to my dad. I know just the thing to do. Don't mind the law hard on our heels. No one's gonna come for you. I believe we're here for a while, then we die But I believe this love is stronger than you and I I believe we're here for a while, then we die But I believe this love is stronger
this map, I'll hold your hand Take this love around the world Okay folks, so it's uh, finally all together. All the draw dowels are in. Uh, I'll show you some in the inside. They've got four on the inside. So you've got one here, two, and then opposite side the same. Over here. Okay. Draw dowels are in, I've just got to cut them to length. If you can notice, there's all putty under every single joint. Every joint is squeezed out putty. Uh, like up here as well. Yeah, so it's finally all in, solid, rigid, there's no movement in that at all. Um, the only thing I'm waiting for now though is I've got two bolts to go on each end of here and they've got, because that's very bit deep timber, I'm going to get some six inch bolts and go straight into the wall, countersinking them in. Um, so I've used these little brass plates to hold that to the uh, uh, block work, stop it lifting. Draw dowels are in, they've just got to be cut off. Some more in there, up along there. As you can see, draw dowels in, draw dowels in the arch. Right. We put a blue sheet up because it was getting too hot. It's just unbearable, be working it outside like this heat. Uh, but she's all in. It's now just got to do the full seals, which I'm going to make up. One for the door as well. Uh, the door seal, I set down in a, a white uh, mastic, a heavy duty mastic, builder's mastic. As you can see it dribbling out the bottom there, but the whole of that was half a tube I put down there. Squeezed it down because I don't want no water coming in on the uh, underside of the uh, seal ever. Um, and pretty much it now. Hang on, let me show you this. I just saw this a little while ago. The size of this caterpillar. It's a beastie. <laughs> Size my finger. It's probably a poisonous one as well. Anyway, there you go, guys. That's it for another week. And next week, tune in again because you'll see me start to build the roof uh, in a traditional uh, medieval style roof. It's light to match this porch. Um, and then see how far we get. And uh, we might even get to tiling, don't know yet, see how far we get. Because uh, there's a bit of joinery in the uh, roof trusses, uh, some half lap joints and uh, some br bridle joints. So there's another, there's a couple of new joints there, bridle joints, so I'll show you. And uh, tell me what you think. Just got to clean them uh, putties off now. Cut the um, pegs to size and then have a nice beer. Deserved. Um, Anyway guys, thanks for following along this week and the last week. Uh, um, this, uh, this treat for Monday for you guys. Uh, and tune in on Friday.